Those traveling by plane or train will love those noise-canceling headphones. But do we have a similar thing for, for industry data, where we can cancel out the noise that our processes and machines are making and really get the signal of how things are going? And no, this is not about the noise that our machine is making. It is about the signal and the noise in our data that we get from our processes and products. Hello, I'm Tom. Welcome to my channel where we talk about continuous improvement in an industrial setting. And this video is inspired by one of the recent videos of Paul Allen. And do go check his channel if you haven't done so already. But there, one of his viewers or probably clients asked him uh, a couple of questions about what can we do within you know, Six Sigma type of, uh, of statistics and processes and uh, this whole Six Sigma uh, tool set and mindset. And the third question was, is there a way to reduce the noise or to ignore the noise that our processes are spitting out uh, when we are sampling it, when we are getting data from it. Uh, and indeed, uh, Paul also made the, uh, the comparison to the, the noise cancelling headphones. Well, those things know indeed what the signal should be and they pick up surrounding sounds and they counter the sound itself. That is not available for your data, not for, well, technically the sound is also data, but not for any data when we don't really know what the signal is, because that is going to be our problem. When we see um, how the data behaves for our process, we are getting the signal and the noise. And for this, uh, for those not too familiar with the, the terminology of the discussion, the signal is, let's say, the, the true midpoint of our process, so really what our process is doing. And what we are getting is measurement values. So somehow we are either doing some laboratory test or we have a sensor somewhere or we're just looking at it, but <clears throat> we get measurement data describing that pro process characteristic. And there is always spread in there. There's a lot of noise around the signal. So we're getting a whole heap of data, but we are looking for the center line. And are there ways that we can ignore in a smart way the noise and focus on that signal? And there, yes, we do have them. So let's check an, a couple of ideas of what might be noise or, or some problem in our process, because that, of course, is why we want to have the signal. Did the process shift? Do we have a difference that is really there? Uh, do we need to act? Now, first is, let's say, a, it's a control chart. Um, we may add some, uh, some control lines to here, but our process is just spitting out some products and we are measuring, let's say, the, uh, the size of our pro uh, products, and they all, you know, they vary a bit around the center line. And what we're interested in here is, uh, well, there is this area here where our process might have shifted. See, there's a, a whole bunch of them is, is quite high. Did we have a problem in this time, or is it just the noise? And another one is, um, uh, and this is what you will often see, the, the Minitab will give you this, uh, when you uh, do a, a t-test, uh, uh, a pairwise comparison. Uh, but this is basically where you have a number of samples and um, all the black round circles, they are one uh, type of process. So maybe uh, that's all operator A doing the measurement and all the red triangles are operator B doing the same, well, the same product, measuring the same product, but then uh, they, yeah, they do it separately, right? So for one product, uh, you see that the operator B uh, measured it a bit lower than A. Uh, for a second product, a bit higher, then lower, then a bit lower again, a bit higher. And what we now want to know is, is there a difference in measuring between operators A and B? And people who are not too f uh, fond of statistics will say, well, yes, there are differences. See, they, they have a different spread and uh, we probably have to do something. Many of those people will also say, well, yes, it's above the line, uh, so we need to act. But here is the problem. This may just be the noise of our measuring process not being very accurate. And no measurement process will be 100% accurate. So is this a difference between the operators or, again, the noise in the system? As soon as I made the comment on Paul's video that SPC is a good way to cancel out the noise, he immediately agreed. But I thought, well, it, it just got me uh, thinking what we do to cancel 
the noise or at least to not react to the noise, so to cancel it out for ourselves within Six Sigma, uh, within process data uh, analysis and, and checking what we should be doing. That's statistics. It's a very big part of statistics is to interpret when should we act. And, and now there is, of course, also a lot of descriptive statistics that, um, that has a completely different function, but especially a lot of the stuff that we use within Six Sigma are statistics to help us understand what is the signal. So what we are doing, and uh, here we have one pretty clear example, and that is to use SPC. Because what we say is we draw a couple of lines and we have a number of rules and we check. In, in this case, the rule that might be triggered is uh, Western Electric norm, rule number three, which is four out of five points are over uh, one sigma. So one, two out of three, only three out of three. No, this is not in fact a deviation. It's not likely that this is uh, an actual process shift. We also don't have eight on the same side. We don't have anything over the two or three sigma. So based on the rules that we know, some statistical rules, we say no. The chance that this is actually a change in the signal and not just some noise, no, no. This is all okay. Another thing that we have, and again this is also statistics, what do you do for this? The, the common way to check if those two operators are performing the tests, the, the measurements, in um, well, basically the same way to see if there's no significant difference between the operators. You can do a, um, a full measurement systems analysis, uh, repeatability, reproducibility, which by the way is also a form of statistics with which you decide if things are good enough or not, so act or not. But in this case, you go for a t-test. So what a t-test will do is check how much variation is there for all of these points together. Um, and what it's trying to do is how much variation is there for this one operator A, how much variation is there for this operator B in the whole system. Uh, they're basically trying to measure the same thing. Uh, how much variation is there in the difference between them? That's actually uh, even uh, a more important one in the pairwise uh, comparison. And then, if on average we see that operator A scored them slightly higher, all of them on average, but this falls within, and again, uh, there are the, the T uh, value uh, tables for this, but if it scores within, let's say, a, a standard deviation roughly, the T test will say, no, no, it's not such a strong difference that I will call it statistically significant. If you take more samples, this uh, this number will drop because the more samples you take, and if there is still a, a higher value on average from one of the two, at some point the statistics will tell us this is a trend. This really is a structural, small but structural difference. Yes, it is a signal, not the noise. So these parts of these, these statistical tests, they are our noise cancelling headphones. And there is one more that I really want to uh, discuss with you as well, uh, because this is uh, definitely a, um, a double-edged sword, and that is when we go into sampling. So when we have a normal distribution of whatever product, uh, I will make a number of samples of four individual products, but then I'll take the mean, and that will be our sample group value. And, and this is the grouping in sampling is important here. Uh, of course, most of the, the random samples that I will take will be roughly around the middle and sometimes there will be a low or a high value in there. These are the normal probability statistics. Now, I took a number of samples and what we now do is we don't look at the individual uh, samples that we measured. This is a subgroup, so we take the average of this subgroup. And what you see is that those averages, they are actually quite close to 
the average of our whole population. This is one of the things why you do this sampling. In fact, if I take four samples, there will be a much steeper, narrower bell curve for the distribution of those means that I get from my sample groups. And in this specific case, and well, here we, we go into, because this is actually the standard error of the mean. The standard error is the standard deviation that we get in the whole population divided by the square root of the number of samples that we put into one group. This is also why I took four samples into a group, because it's a very easy square root, because the root of four will be two. So in fact, the distribution of these averages from our subgroup samples in this example will be half as wide as the distribution of all of the individual products, the individual samples that we would take. So this is also a way to uh, reduce reacting to, to the noise. Because you see this one here, if we, if we would have taken this value, we probably would have acted on it. It's, it's quite far from the norm. It would be somewhere here in the graph again. So we have this you know, more than two sigmas away from the mean point. That's already quite, uh, quite a big, for our feelings, deviation from what we're used to. And we might want to recalibrate our machine based on this. But luckily we also had a couple of samples that are closer to the medium and even a bit on the right side. So in the end, our average was quite okay. We don't have to act for this. So by sampling a, uh, a small group and then taking the average of the analyses of your subgroup sample, you also are cancelling out the noise. But, and this is also very important, you do have the same with these two a bit as well. But if you do this, you do have to know that this red, very nice, narrow, uh, normal distribution, that is not the process that you have. You again have to take into account that when you take groups of samples, you are going to reduce the, the visible standard deviation of your uh, of your group sample averages, because this is not the standard deviation of your whole set of products. This is the standard error of the mean of your subgroup samples. And if you take sample groups of four, that means you will have twice as much spread in your whole process. So that means that these values here will be there. They will be uh, going to your customer. So you might say, oh, this is nice. And now let's draw some six sigma lines here. So we say uh, this is basically going to be one sigma. And then here we have six sigmas, but no, we actually have six standard errors. The actual process will be generating quite a lot more defects. So be careful with how you do your sampling uh, and how you make the subgroups. It is a great way to reduce the noise if what you are interested in is where is my average? Did my whole process shift? Then this one, your nice uh, fin distribution curve, will move very visibly. So this is a great way to detect change in your process. So to detect a signal shift out of the noise. And that is why in SPC you quite often, in fact, uh, instead of individual points, use subgroup samples. As long as you are aware that this is not the spread in your production. Your production will have much broader total spread. There will always be a couple of products going far outside of the standard error of the, of the means. But uh, again, statistics, and these are just a number of the examples, that is the answer to how we have our noise cancelling headphones within data in our industry. Use it in a good way to tell you when do we act, when don't we act. And, and by the way, the reason why this is so noise cancelling is what you actually do with at least with these two, these two tests, and you can buff it with this concept, is when you do a t-test, what you are asking uh, in a stati uh, statistical way is, is this a likely difference 
that would just be there in any normal situation? Or is the chance very big that there is indeed a difference? And, and the, the cutoff points that are more or less chosen for you, if you don't dive too deeply into the statistics, but just take the standards like the Western Electric rules, like um, I want a p-value of 0.05 and then it's okay. If you take that, uh, what it's basically doing is it, it's making the action choice already for you. When you see a, a shift, but it is not significant, you just, you don't act. Uh, no, stop, we'll maybe gather a bit more data, but we are not going to uh, either you know, fire one of those operators or retrain them. Uh, no, but we're not really going to do anything with the operators yet. We're going to check the system a bit more, or we're not going to change our process parameters because this was probably part of the noise. And well, the next point did show that uh, probably indeed it was part of the noise. But when it goes over, so when we do get this one, then we send the signal act now. So instead of seeing all this noise going around, we get the signal, which is the rule. So that's, uh, that's how we noise cancel out uh, the, uh, the noise in our data. I hope you like these, um, I would say maybe not even training things, but, but eye-openers of why we actually do it. And, and that's why I so much liked this subject and I wanted to make a follow-up video on it uh, because I think this um, is just part of what we in the, uh, in the continuous improvement community should know, and especially if you're in Six Sigma, know what we're trying to do, why we are doing all, all those things. And well, you can see I get my energy from explaining this to you. I hope you also liked it. Hit that like button if you did. And uh, please drop me a comment. Which other uh, topic, subjects would you like me to explain? I'll be happy to dig it out and get some examples or some uh, creative way to, uh, to make it easier to understand. For now, I wish you the best of luck with your Six Sigma. And uh, as always, don't forget to enjoy the improvement journey.